because they're going to be all about it. Um, so it's an exciting thing. One thing I want to say about that graphic I got thrown up, and me and Jim kind of talked about it, I think that, that third game back that was a 17-10, that was a preseason game. I think the game before that, the Chiefs actually won. Uh, was a playoff game with Alex Smith. Um, so I just want I just want to put it out there. In the last three games, I think we're two and one against the Texans. Okay. Gary, what's your hot take on that game? You know, I, I mean, I I don't see the Chiefs losing this game at home. I mean, I've, I've been to Arrowhead, Mike. You've played in Arrowhead. It is a very unique venue uh, for big time football, and this is going to be about as big time as it can get. I mean, the Super Bowl champions open at home in prime time. And especially with, you know, this quarantine the way it is, you know, we, we don't know exactly when we're going to get to have a huge gathering. And so the longer this quarantine goes on, I mean, I, I think the bigger that event grows, that home opener at Arrowhead, I mean, kicking off the NFL season, because you're going to get you're going to get people that are going to try to travel to Kansas City just because that's the first game of the NFL season that aren't Chiefs fans and aren't Houston fans. We just want to go to the NFL opener. And so I, I think there's I, – I, in my mind, I don't see a way the Chiefs lose this game. So um, week two, traveling to Los Angeles, uh, Chargers uh, the in the afternoon time slot. You know, they are going to open – the Chargers at least open their uh, new stadium, um, SoFi Stadium. It, it actually opens week one with the Dallas Cowboys at the L.A. Rams. But first Chargers home game in that. So, uh, Mike, quickly uh, talk about your your take here, division game, opening their stadium. Are you there, Mike? All right, we may have lost our guest. We'll uh, I'll start check. Yeah, and, yeah. Why don't you well, go Jim, start. I'll start breaking it down. Uh, Chargers are rolling in. Um, so first of all, I want to say it's uh, Chiefs and it's Andy Reid and it's a division game. Um, so every time that happens, you got to think like the Chiefs have a nice uh, shot at winning because one thing Andy Reid's done since he's come in is Andy Reid's taking care of division games. Um, his, I don't know. I don't have his uh, win loss record on division, uh, you know, on hand or anything. But it's I mean it's significant, and we win the AFC West. Uh, I think we've won the way FC West uh, every year except for once uh, since Andy Reid's been here. Um, somebody can correct me if I'm wrong on that. But I'll say this, the Chargers are going in basically with uh, moving on from Phillip Rivers, uh, going with a new starting quarterback, which actually they're saying they're going to start Tyrod Taylor, um, which I'm not scared of Tyrod Taylor. Um, and I, and as far, So just being that, Chargers, Tyrod Taylor, and uh, just how well the uh, – Chiefs do typically against division opponents. I actually will take the Chiefs on this one also. I think it'll be a close game um, because their defense is really good, uh, but I'll take the Chiefs on this one as well. All right, so, Mike, are you back now? We got you? Yes. I'm sorry. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah, yeah. no, we got you. Um, technical difficulties there. But uh, so I, I was just – I don't know if you heard me talking about intro to the Chargers, you know, them opening their new stadium – I don't know, you know, as an NFL player, is, is opening a stadium a big deal? Yeah, I think it is a big deal. I did it in New York, right? So you got the same fan base. I don't know what it's like doing it, uh, switching, you know, switching fan bases. I mean, L.A.'s still in L.A., but but uh, you obviously still got the uh, the fan base growing out there. Um, so I, I don't – I'm not – it's not that big of a deal, but uh, – you know, there is some extra excitement, some extra hype. I think at this game, the biggest thing is to remember that this team doesn't have, because no teams have OTAs and mini camps and summer programs. And so that becomes very difficult when you have a new quarterback coming in, like Tyrod Taylor or that first round pick that they got. Um, it's very hard for them to to come in, you know, they, they have no way to get in there to get, get ready with, with the wide receivers and get used to their offensive line and get cadences down. So teams that have either young quarterbacks or new quarterbacks, they're really at a diff disadvantage this year. Uh, and especially to start the season off, right, where you have San Diego mm -hmm. week two. Um, you're going to have a team that's still trying to figure out how to operate with a new quarterback. 
Um, and so I think this is a massive advantage to be able to play these guys early in the season because I can't imagine by week two they're going to have ironed out all the kinks, uh, not having the offseason program to get their quarterbacks ready to play in that offense. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with you. That, that That's a point that, you know, I brought up just as, as a coach myself. I know when you have a lot of pieces, you're changing in and out. I mean, especially at the quarterback position, uh, you know, it, it's hard to kind of get that team chemistry down. And when, you know, you're having, having to do it virtually right now and you're not able to be on the field in OTAs, it, it is going to make things more difficult on everyone. So, again, I, I think the Chiefs start 2-0, and you know, at LA, I, I just feel like that the Chargers are at a huge disadvantage with Kansas City pretty much bringing back their entire offense, and the Chargers having a new piece at quarterback. You know, not to mention the other positions, but they're, they're going to have a new quarterback regardless because you know Philip Rivers has moved on. So, uh, week three, hold on, uh, hold on, oh, oh. Mike. Uh, so, whenever you were on the defensive line and you, you saw Phillip Rivers, did you picture him in his media bola and just say, I want to yank that bola off your head? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's a funny guy. He's a fun guy. To he's such a competitor, and he's a crap talker at quarterback, as everybody yeah. knows. So, uh, I enjoyed – I really enjoyed playing against uh, uh, Phillip Rivers. And I think he's still – I think he's still got some in the tank. I think he'll do well. Um uh, but, but yeah, I'm glad he's out of there because I think, again, this is, it is tough to be going into this season without an established veteran at, at quarterback. And so I love nothing better than see the Chargers lose. Yeah. Week, week three is a big game, you know, at Baltimore Ravens, Baltimore is a, another one of those teams with a young quarterback in, in Jackson that some people, you know, are saying that could be a, a face of the AFC for the next you know, 10 years or whatever it is. I'm a big Lamar Jackson fan. I, I don't think that he is better than Patrick Mahomes. Um, but I do, as a fan, I enjoy watching Lamar Jackson play in these Raven teams. So, And that, uh, is, a, that is a primetime game. It is a primetime Monday night game. You know, so national TV audience, Chiefs coming home from L.A. and then traveling to Baltimore the following week. You know, the back-to-back -back travel weeks, is that tough as a player? Yeah, that is difficult. Uh, it's a little bit easier when you're in the you know the middle of the country like Kansas City is. I remember being with the Jets and having to travel uh, to the West Coast, and then you know so you're traveling six hours the plane, then you come home, and then you got to go to Miami or something like that. You know, uh, that's a little bit more difficult. Uh, being being in the middle of the country helps, but if you look at one game on the schedule that you say, okay, if there's one that they that that they could lose, it could be this one, right? I mean, mm -hmm. this is a team. It's got a great defense, said established quarterback that can run the ball. I mean, does a lot of what Patrick Mahomes does. Not as good, but a competitor. Mm -hmm. Good offensive line. Um, uh, you know, a solid, solid football team in their place at in prime time. Uh, so, if there are any game that you said, okay, right, you this would be the only game. You know, this one and maybe Tampa Bay. Would be, this, this is not. Uh, the distance is a little bit closer between these two teams than Kansas City versus anybody else. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, when, when I look at it, when the schedule first came out, and, you know, I'm kind of glancing through at, at first glance, this is definitely a game that I kind of circled that I'm like, man, not, not only do I, as a fan, I want to watch this game, I want to sit down and, and watch it because I think it'll be a really good football game. But, two, it, it's one that, you know, not, not that – I see the Chiefs going there and losing, but it's definitely a possibility, you know, that, that you have to say. I mean, it's easy to, to sit here and go, oh, man, the Chiefs are going to go 16-0, and and they're defending Super Bowl champs. They're mm. going to do it again. But, I mean, you, you know from playing in the league so long, when you play the defending Super Bowl champs, you want to prove your worth because that's the measuring stick yeah. at the time. And so, you know, Baltimore is one of those teams that fell short last year, and so – they're going to say, hey, we got home on a Monday night against Super Bowl champions, and they're going to be pumped up, and they're going to be ready to go. Yeah, that's a great point. I mean, that's something that uh, you bring up that I, I think is worth noting is that you're right. The tar you, you got the bullseye on you now. Uh, you're, the super you're, you're going to get everybody's best, best shot. You're the Super Bowl champion. Uh, and you probably got a team that thinks 
if they would have got you in the playoffs last year, they might have been able to beat you. Mm-hmm. You know, I know that, that the Ravens team is a team that thinks they should have been in the Super Bowl. Um, so yeah, you're going to get you're going to get their best shot definitely at their place. Um, uh, and so that'll be a good game to see. Okay, is, is Kansas City the same team? Which I which I really believe they are. But what what caliber team do we have this year? And I think that'll be one of those that'll be one of those prove them games. Let, let's see if this still is the championship team that you guys were a year ago. Yeah, most definitely. Then week four, the Chiefs are back home, and you get the New England Patriots. Uh, you know they they had some guy at quarterback for you know like the last fifteen <laughs> years that. that I think he was pretty good. Um, how, many, how many sacks did you have on him, Mike? Can you believe I played him fourteen times and I I never sacked him? <laughs> oh man! Um, <laughs> but yeah, so he, Sorry, that's one of those uh, uh, awkward silence moments. Yeah, uh, um, you know, he, he in, in my opinion, you know, he, he's the greatest quarterback to to play the game, and you know, maybe I didn't see some of those old older guys play, but. He, he's the best guy to, to do it, in my opinion. But he's no longer in New England. Um, you know, they do still have Bill Belichick, who I, I think is the greatest coach uh, to ever do it. But uh, they'll be coming to Kansas City week four. Um, you know, what are your thoughts on this one? You know, this is one of those ones that I'm, I'm in the camp that thinks that Tom Brady was much more responsible for their success than Bill Belichick was. Okay. And so I, I'm not worried that Bill Belichick is still the, uh, the head coach. Uh, I'm worried about playing Tom Brady on Sundays. With Tom Brady out of there and that, the young kid that they have, I mean, they didn't get a, a star quarterback. But they, they kept the young kid that they have there. They say they like him. Again, we're still season, right? This is what, week four now? Mm-hmm. Week four, yes. Still early in the season with a young player who hasn't had OTAs, who hasn't had many camp who's going to have a, you know, a just training camp to get ready. Now three week, three games, and he's playing the Super Bowl champions. Um, and trying to live up to that Tom Brady, uh, that Tom Brady level, that Tom Brady standard that's been set. I, I don't see New England being that great. I, I really don't. Not, not this year. Um, I really think 95% of their success, well, maybe I shouldn't say that much, but I, I think that of, a vast, the vast majority of their success is due to Tom Brady and not Bill Belichick. All right. Well, you you and I differ there. I th- I think they about equally share the success. You know, if not a little more to the coach, and maybe that's the coach in me. You know, wanting wanting to kind of give him a little more credit. But you know, I, I still think that Andy Reid uh, is is a really good coach, and he's going to know the importance of this game because it is the new England Patriots, even though they've lost Tom Brady, you know, everybody's still going to say this is the new England Patriots and this is Bill Belichick. Mm-hmm. So, you know, he, he's going to know the importance of it. And especially, you know, having a tough road game the week before coming back home to Kansas city. I mean, I, I think Andy Reid will have his team ready to go. Yeah. I would have to think so too. Um, looks like the Patriots are going to probably start uh, Stidham. Uh, is probably going to be their starting quarterback um, instead of, you know, obviously instead of Brady. And then really uh, Cam Newton hasn't really got looked at by them. And I think they've kind of said they're they're, hmm. they're moving on without Cam. Um, so, I mean, I have to say it's it's going to be a W. Um, I've seen actually some projections on, on what the Patriots are going to do this year. And, and the projections go anywhere from – from uh, six to eight wins, um, just because they're they're actually uh, salary cap wise, they're not in a great spot either. Um, so I mean, I think this is actually is, a, and it's a home game, so I think it's a W for the Chiefs. Then staying home here in Kansas. yeah, and you make a good point, Andy. Go ahead. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to cut. You. No, go ahead. Andy Reid is not going to have um, is not going to have these guys looking past anybody. Right, so that's another another real benefit of playing for an Andy Reid team, um, and it's something that Belichick has always done really well. Is whether you know, Owen Owen fifteen or uh, fifteen and one, uh, he or fourteen and one, he's not overlooking you. He, he's making sure that the team is ready to play everybody the same way, respecting everybody the same way. Uh, and so, as much as every team is going to give Kansas City their best shot, Kansas City is isn't going to come out there and 
and just throw out the towel and say, well, we're the Super Bowl champions, so everybody roll over. Um, that's not how Andy Reid does it. So I think that's a good point. He's going to have those guys ready.